we're here at PAX 2015 in Melbourne. I'm Sarah and I'm here with Simon and Chad Habel, who has been this morning speaking at the uh, panel Games with Ames. Chad, could you tell us a little bit about what Games with Ames was? Sure, yes, it was all a kind of discussion around the Australian STEM video game challenge. So this is a challenge competition where school kids from years 5 to 12 approximately um, create a video game around a STEM concept, so science, technology, engineering and mathematics, uh, for a competition to win prizes and then they come and get presented at PAX. So that's what was going on to this morning. What sort of things do they create in that time? What sort of things did you talk about in this panel? So, uh, in the competition, they all create... The main thing they do is create a game. Like, that's what they have to do. It has to be a finished game. It's like, you can't have half a game or a game that doesn't work. A broken game doesn't really pass. Um, so, they have to complete a game and a game design document because there's a real focus on design-based learning. So, they have to, you know, talk about the assets that they've developed and how they designed it and some of the challenges they experienced. So, it's a lot of that reflective learning kind of design type stuff but we had a few speakers on the panel there was me and I'm from the University of Adelaide and Game Truck Australia uh, there was a coder so a, the lead programmer from Ubisoft Montreal um, previously she just quit that job Bree Code um, there was Jacqueline Curnow who was a teacher running the uh, running the show running the competition in her school and then there was Josh Caratelli who's like one of my favourite guys ever he's just finished year 12 last year and he's one of the winners last year and he's now started a company commercially released his game that he created for the competition and stuff like that so um, we just talked around the issues around the the challenge and what was going on there uh, overall with the panel over is there an overall look at how games how games improve the education of those of that stem education like side of things or was it more just specifically for the challenge uh, yeah, it was a pretty broad. It was yeah. pretty broad brush, broad brush strokes. So not everyone on the panel, everyone on the panel had different kind of experiences with the challenge, um, and it was really very much about how game development can help STEM learning. Because the idea of the the idea of the challenge is that they create a game that's around a STEM concept. So it's designed to represent some concept in science or mathematics or something like that. So we talked a bit about the problems in the industry, uh, in STEM industries, of people getting well qualified students and then the way that feeds down through the educational system as well so yeah I suppose we should just quickly touch on what STEM is. Could you explain yeah. that? Sure, okay. So STEM is science, technology, engineering and mathematics. So it's that whole kind of, I guess, nerdy science type side of things. Now that's not my background, um, but it's um, a field that's come into a lot of attention recently because there's low enrolments in school, low completion rates in school, which makes it harder for universities to train people in those areas. And the idea is that in the digital age, in the 21st century, people are going to need a STEM education and need lots of like quality people who are highly qualified in all sorts of sciences, technology, engineering and mathematics. And the problem for Australia is there are not many. It's actually declining, so enrolments are declining and we've got a problem there. So we're trying to address that through some learning strategies. So as opposed to a game sort of like, or, or an educational platform like Classcraft, have you heard of Classcraft? Yeah. yeah, so this is more designed to specifically target one particular aspect rather than a, a course teaching program. Like the, the, the kind of, yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, so my understanding is that Classcraft is a much more broad based. It's kind of a gamified classroom environment generally. Um, the challenge is about, the idea is that you create a game and the game can be almost anything and it can be created on any, pl any platform. So um, quite often the younger kids use Scratch. That's a really popular one. Um, but they may use, uh, what's the other one? Game Designer, Game, game Star Pro, you know. Yeah, GameStar Pro. Um, some of them use Unity, so up at the higher levels there's a, an advanced category where they develop games in Unity. Um, so it's kind of platform agnostic, uh, but the idea is to just produce a game that works and represents some concepts in STEM somehow or other. Hmm. And could you give us a quick wrap up on the kind of topics you covered in the panel today? Like, what were, what did you guys speak about? Yeah, sure. Uh, so they started off asking me about uh, educational type stuff um, and like why there is a why there's been a loss or a decline in STEM outcomes amongst students and, and learning. Uh, we talked a little bit about the experience of being in the challenge. So there was a teacher there and a former winner of the challenge, uh, and they were able to talk about you know, what it's like 
creating a game for the challenge or facilitating students learning around that, things like that. Uh, then there was quite a bit of discussion around diversity in game development because one of the things that they've done is introduce an Indigenous prize and a prize for uh, girls uh, creating games. So uh, we had quite a discussion about like probably almost every panel ends up talking about you know diversity in gaming and diversity in game development and how to enhance that and build that um, and that's one of the things that the challenge tries to do as well. Fantastic, yeah. yeah. Well I think that wraps it up for us here today. Thank you very much for speaking with us Chad. It was Thanks lovely. for having me. And that was Console Domination speaking to Chad Hable at PAX 2015. Thanks. Cheers.